Big and bold flood fill images are great and an easy way to make your slides stand out. But it's not all about pictures and presentation zen. Inevitably, you'll need to place other content on your slides, whether that's facts, figures, charts, or even, dare I say it, bullet points. This is where the use of white space in presentation design becomes crucial. White space is important because it plays a major role in contributing to the overall readability and organization of a well-designed presentation. It draws your audience's attention to certain parts of the slide. For example, the combination of the white space and the arrow here will lead you to look at the space on the left for what's coming next. But the image could also be considered white space, or more appropriately, negative space, as it's not interfering with the key content, which is the arrow. Then you can bring in the next portion, and the white space area now nicely confines the diagram as it builds up and changes to tell the story. The use of white space is all about focusing attention, removing clutter, and adding a sense of luxurious content that comes by not cramming everything you can onto the slide. So when you think about white space, it's not just the amount of white space that's on the slide. I mean, here's an example that still looks terrible even though there's plenty of white going on. Let's look at how you can apply some white space to the content in design terms. White space is really more about areas of contrast that can help focus your attention on specific elements. In this case, the white background isn't doing anything useful. But if you look at the image more closely, the smartwatch is a focal point, but the rest of the image is very much background. That provides nice contrast, so you could think of the hands, arm and cityscape as being white space. With that in mind, you can use a technique called overcrop to position the image precisely where you want it across a large area of the slide. Select the image and on the Format tab on the ribbon, choose Crop on the right hand side. Use the black grab handles on the image to drag a bounding box up into the top left hand corner and down to the bottom right. This gives you an area to now frame your image. If you use the white grab handles, you can now increase the size of the image and you'll notice that when the image goes outside of that new bounding box, it gets dark, and so it won't be shown on the slide. What this technique allows you to do is resize and reposition your image so that it fits well on the slide, allowing you to position the areas of focus, in this case the watch, precisely where you want. That looks good for the image, but it's created a problem with the text. Actually, the main problem with the text is that the font used is Comic Sans, which is derided as the worst thing since, well, uh, actually I don't know, it's just so ingrained as being terrible, there's probably nothing worse. So first things first, change the font to something much more pleasing, using the font type drop down on the home tab probably anything you like, but ideally a system font that's compatible with everyone else's computer. Sago UI Lite is nice, so let's use that for example. Now, the main problem is that the black text gets lost against the bottom of the arm here. So if you change the font color to something lighter using the color options on the left of the home tab, well, you also have a problem now because now it's washed out against the sky. The easy thing to do here is create a content placeholder which gives contrast to everything. Using the Shapes tool on the Home tab, draw a rectangle that surrounds the text and goes from the bottom of the title down to the bottom of the slide. Use the Layer functions on the Home tab and under Arrange on the right hand side to move the new box behind the text using Send Backwards. And now the text clearly stands out. The problem is that now it's completely cut off from the image. But, if you right click on the box and choose Format Shape from the bottom of the pop-up menu, you'll get the Shape Fill options, which includes this slider at the bottom to set the transparency of the shape. Drag that around until it feels right, probably about 30% in this case. And now you have a contrast box for the text, but where the image still comes through, it's all connected. Nice. It's looking better, but still not perfect. Let's look at the text. There's a lot there, but say you need to keep it all, well, it's a bit tricky to follow because it's all center aligned. So select the text box and use the text align tools in the middle of the home tab to align the text to the left of the text box. There's still a lot of text, so ask which part is most important. 
the paragraph on the top about the philosophy or the bullets underneath with the features. It could be either depending upon your objective, so let's go for the feature bullets. To make them stand out, create a hierarchy using text size. Reduce the size of the paragraph on the home tab using the font menu and make it something like 20 points. That makes the bullets stand out much more clearly. But they're still probably too big, so maybe take those down a little to say 24 points. And maybe make them really different by using a bold font style instead, which is just under the font size options. There you go, there's a nice structure to it now. But it's still not quite right. This may just be a personal preference, but I hate bullet points. So you can toggle those on and off by selecting the bullets button in the middle of the home tab. But you still want them to stand out, so you need to alter the line spacing. Highlight just the bullets and find this icon on the home tab with the lines of text and the up and down arrow. It allows you to change the spacing of text between lines. And by choosing two, you get extra space between each point. Now, demark each point by drawing a short line between the two lines of text and use the copy drag technique by holding down the control and shift keys to drag two additional lines between the remaining points. You may need to reposition the text slightly within the frame, but once you are happy with the position, what do you think? A much better laid out and more considered slide that helps your audience assimilate the information more quickly and easily. And it's just combining a couple of simple techniques, while remembering the idea of white space to frame things clearly.